Holy moly! Greetings, everybody. I'm gonna find how do you do. This is actually gonna be my first vlog. And I was kind of inspired to do this because I saw Costin Bromstar do, uh, do his first vlog a little while ago. And uh, I have no understanding of what it is exactly that I'm doing other than a, a log is just basically like a captain's log, star date, 2013, poo in your pants or whatever. You know, in a captain's log, like on a ship, they keep the records of the day and the things that have happened, their thoughts, their, uh, their uh, uh, interpretations of experiences that they've had out there at sea. So I guess a vlog is just the same thing as a log, except it's a video log. That's why they call it a vlog, I think. But at any rate, so here I am. I got some packages that I want to open up. There's some other stuff going on. I've had a couple of Norcos. I'm in a lot, I was in a lot of pain earlier. You know, my car, I don't know why I did this, but, you know, I wanted to clear some snow across the street because uh, some idiot put a bunch of snow, a pile of snow, where my wife parks sometimes in case of an emergency. It's all permit parking around here, and sometimes somebody takes our space in front of the house, so she parks across the street, and somebody put all this snow there to leave enough room for only one car and there's usually enough room for two cars so like an idiot I take my car to figure I could just flatten it down and I got stuck but my car actually went up and got stuck and <laughs> I had to dig the snow out from underneath and the car finally dropped and I was able to get it out of there after about an hour talk about stupid things I thought I still had a four-wheel drive or something I don't know and I was on my knees, my new knees, and I was laying on uh, the wet snow, and it was pouring rain and stuff, and I got soaking wet. And so I got in, I had to take a hot bath, wash my clothes. They're still washing in the back there. And uh, I was in a lot of pain afterwards, so I took some Norcos, and I'm kind of, uh, you know, maybe a little bit loopy now. So, just that's what you see that's what it is uh, a spoon you know this is one of the books that uh, Venom Homer Lewis sent me uh, with some other stuff a while ago it was a you know like a kind of like a birthday gift I guess and uh, I love the old ads in these books you know this is from 19, mm, 1972 Somebody's ads are totally here. Here's a monster. A seven feet tall, one dollar, and all these other little things you can buy, these joke things up there. What does it say up there? Right, let's take a look at this here. Woof! Man, am I loopy. Snowstorm tablets. Create a miniature snowstorm indoors. Oh, wow. That's all I need. I got enough snow outdoors to shovel. Now you want me to do one indoors? Create a snowstorm indoors? We'll actually cover a whole room. <laughs> Watch the fun start when you place one of these almost invisible tablets on the burning end of a cigarette. Watch them run for the snow shovel. That's what it says. You got kids reading this and they're telling you to smoke on top of it. Put a bunch of snow in your living room and smoke while you're at it. <laughs> what a crazy act, man. The magic world of surprises and mystery. The next one over here was that one, number two, is vampire blood. Looks like you're really bleeding. Put a few drops on your skin or the corner of your mouth and watch the faces of everyone who sees you Fright, horror, sympathy for your apparent suffering. <laughs> sympathy for your apparent suffering. Fake blood. What's the third one? Is a, oh, the old standby, the whoopee cushion. Simply place it on someone's chair or couch, and when 
Your favorite victim sits down, watch the fun, and whoopee, begin. Strange sound effects, better imagined than described, will fill the air, much to their embarrassment. Will fill the air? Are they talking about a whoopee cushion that really does a whoopee? <laughs> Smoke from your fingers. Amaze and amuse your friend. Show your Show your hands to be empty, then reach out into the air, and clouds of smoke will rise from your fingertips. Repeat over and over, harmless. No sleight of hand, no gimmicks, nothing is lit or burned. Complete nothing. I, I, I don't get it. Atomic joy buzzer. Wind it up and wear it like a ring. Shake hands and watch your friends jump. Place it on a chair and they will hit the ceiling. Oh sure, and split their head open. That's a nice gimmick. Itching pop oh wait a minute, before that. Twenty-five lessons in hypnosis. Do you realize the power that hypnotism will give you? With the magic power of hypnosis, you can hypnotize at a glance, make people obey your commands, strengthen your memory, develop a strong personality, overcome bad habits. I know what I'd use it for. <laughs> atom pistol. Atomic pistol. Atomic atom pistol. Fires real blanks. What do they mean by it fires real blanks? A blank is a blank. <laughs> it fires real blanks. Holy crap on a cracker. With the roar of a full-size gun. Fires real blanks with the roar of a full-size gun. Only the size of a half a dollar. Hmm. And then the old standby the itching powder. The more they scratch, the more they itch. Put it down their neck, in their clothes, on the bed, or any article they handle. That's all you need to start the ball rolling. They'll scratch themselves right out of their skin. Start your itching party today, I tell ya. I'm not making it up, that's what it says right there. I don't know, you probably can't read that. But it's there, people. Silly ads, I love these old ads, you know. And I love this issue too, this is a kind of a wacky story. Uh, Superman is in the, uh, by, you know, discovers that his Fortress of Solitude has been uh, compromised by these guys that are, you know, uh, looking for oil. And he finds out that they have discovered his Fortress of Solitude, actually, actually the door. And uh, he finds out that they have a legal right to it because they got a permit, they got the licenses, everything what they need. So he has to defeat them legally. He has to do it by the book. Kind of a wacky story from the Bronze Age. In the end, actually, what happens in the end, that's a spoiler warning here, he uh, takes a block of ice, well, he takes, he makes another door and puts the, the fake door in front of the real door, and then in between the doors, he puts a block of ice to make it look like it's just the whole iceberg. So they take the front fake door off and discover that it's nothing nothing behind it just an iceberg and uh, that's how he solved the problem anyway well let me do some package openings here this one foist I know that you know well let's see you know what I do I gotta feel the end a little bit to make sure that uh, there's nothing going to be in the way, and then clip it like that. And, uh, get that sucker over there. Let's see what we got here. Protected good with the cardboard. Let's see here. Mm. 
you know, when I open these with a, uh, a knife like this, I always kind of go on the cardboard, you know, make sure, even though you're not, you're not touching the book, but you know, just to be on the safe side, cut right into the cardboard here, like this. Instead of actually going in between the two pieces, you know, and you don't touch nothing. Yeah. It's in mylar. That's nice. You don't, don't see that too often when a book is in mylar. Now I already have two copies of this. One is like very fine, and they're mint or very fine plus. And uh, I want, and I have one that's uh, just. A reading copy maybe in good plus condition and uh, what I wanted to do was take the high grade copy that I have and the low grade copy that I have and grade those two and then put them up you know on eBay and then keep this copy you know for my collection because uh, I got too many doubles of everything, so I'm going to start selling all my doubles and triples and stuff like this. You said this thing was in very fine. I don't know. It's kind of browning around the edges. I don't know if you can see that there. A little bit. Or tanning, not actually brown. Well, starting to brown a little bit. I can't. Put this in a very fine minus. He did, I think, whoever it was. I can't, can't make out who the person is because the name is different on the package. So we got the back. What the? Uh oh. Uh oh. Holy sh! Nice. I can't. I don't believe this. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I, I paid you know some bucks for it. Look at. Am I going? Son of a bitch! I can't believe this. Here, I'll have to show it to you. It looks like it's been cut with a scissors. The top of the back cover. Can you see that? Take a close look at the top of that cover. You see how that's been cut that looks like it's been cut with a scissors or a knife no it looks like a scissors look at that oh man I can't I cannot believe that crap now I gotta call this guy there it is again let me show you to you from this angle you see that how it comes down right there definitely been cut that has been cut with a scissors I don't know Holy crap. Now how could the guy put this like in very fine condition? And he has 100% positive feedback. Oh man. I, I got, this is the third book that I got in as many weeks that has a big problem with it. And I had to contact these guys to get either a credit or they, have, or they take the book back. How could they miss something like that? How can you miss something like that? Unless they did it on purpose, you know, and think that they can get away with it. Well, not going to get away with it with me. Crap. I don't, you know, he's got a 100% positive rating, so I don't, you know, think that he did anything on purpose here. But I, I got to call that guy. Call, I mean, uh, contact him. Robert Beerbaum. Robert Beerbaum. But that's probably his name. I don't know what his uh, eBay name is. I, I got to check it. Anyway, oh that man, ah, God Almighty! Let's see what happens. Ah. Oh here, look at this. Ooh, that really upsets me. I I paid like almost 150 bucks for that book. To be honest with you, I you know. This is the Reminisce magazine. This is a uh, really a cool magazine because I'm kind of nostalgic for the past. I have an interest in uh, the 50s and 60s and stuff. And uh, this is just loaded with great photographs from uh, the 30s, the 40s. The, 
and uh, other sorts of schmutz that just fall right out of the magazine. Um, it's only like a 12 and a half bucks you get two years. That's 12 issues because it's only published by a monthly. But uh, it's got a lot of great articles in here and photographs, you know, uh, classic cars and the, the stories behind them from actual people that own the cars and stuff. And look at this. What a great ad. This has got to be from, uh, what, late 40s? Nabisco Oreo. Wow. Look at these ads in here, these pit photographs, man, this is cool. You can take these and uh, you can go to, uh, oh, I got to show you that too. That's something I can show you too that I didn't even think about. You can uh, go to a print shop or a FedEx place, you know, and, and, and enlarge these, you know. You can, you don't have to cut them out, but you can have them enlarged, you know, and then you can uh, frame them or something, put them up on a wall. I do that with other ads. I'll show you that in a minute. What actually what I'm doing. This is a. There goes my dryer. Clothes I got wet digging out my car like a nincompoop. Oh look at this. Got this every every issue. When Sundays were funny. There ought to be a law. I'll say. There ought to be a law. Oh yeah, this is really, really nice. I like this. Got so many great articles and by the people that actually uh, lived during that time and uh, you know the, the experiences they had with uh, living during that period. Because I thought there was something else in here I wanted to show you. Uh, something, an article on the diners, all the great diners of the fifties. Where is it? Now, looky here. Don't you try to do that to me. We are here. Streamliner Diners. Here's one. Oh, this is from 1938. Wow. 1938. I love old diners. I go to... I seek out diners that are... Uh, in the, the area within, you know, like 25 mile radius. If there are any diners left, I always look for those. You know. Is that the only diner that they're showing? They do an article on diners and they only show one diner? No! Oh! Oh! Take a look at this diner. This was featured in the movie Alice's Restaurant. Diner starting Alice. Actual photographs of the diner that they used in that movie, Alice's Restaurant. Anyway, Reminisce Magazine. They have an interest in the 50s, 40s. Be a cool magazine. Twelve and a half bucks for 12 issues. Oh, here. Did I show you this crap what I'm doing? What else am I doing? See, I uh, copy interesting ad ads that are interesting f for me from comic books, like this. And then I uh, later on can enlarge these and, you know, use them as posters and stuff. Some of them I did enlarge, but they didn't enlarge to the to where I wanted, the size I wanted, so. Look at that, a dollhouse with electricity, battery operated electricity, 598. And on the back I write, well I didn't on that one, hmm, or did I, yes I did. I write what ish, what comic book I got it from, this is from Bunny number 12, 1969. What else I got here, oh yeah. The tank. That came from Bunny Number Six, 
Uh, let's see, what are that? That's about it, I guess. Oh, here's something. The famous sea monkeys. This is from Strange Adventures 226 from 1970. And it is slightly enlarged. It's pretty neat, you know, you can frame this and then hang it up on a wall. I like stuff like that. I got a lot of stuff from the 30s that I did, ads from the 30s that I did like this too, in 11 by 17. This is from Strange Adventures 226, the same issue. Oh, this is interesting. From that same issue, 1970, Strange Adventures 226. Take a look at this. They're asking you to fill out a, uh, let's wrap. Some kind of a survey, survey to find out the things that interest you. And you can check it and send it in, and uh, you get to tell them what you think about, you know, not just comic books, but other stuff as well. And uh, take a look at these questions right there. How interested are you in reading about pollution, black people, city problems and hobbies, romance? But how interested are you in black people? <laughs> oh my God. 1972. Shows you how far we've come now, you know. That's that's kind of funny. In, in a way, it's funny. But it's unbelievable. Holy crap, man. And how about these? I love this. Remember those old flats, those comic book flat ads where they had all these for like a buck or a buck and a half? Task Force, these games. You go online today, if they have a game like this, and it's very, very difficult to find in a complete and in a the flat box, it can go for hundreds of bucks. You used to be able to get those for a buck and a half. That's a cool ad. So anyway. Uh, how interested are you in black people? Like there's some kind of an alien, you know, race or something. <laughs> Unbelievable. It shows you. It reflects the time period, 1972, you know. Unbelievable. Well, we did come quite a ways. And we still got a lot of frickin' problems, man. Unbelievable problems. All right. Let me open up another package here and hopefully, uh, let me open up this big one over here. I already started to open this. I know what this is. This is for a CGC graded comic. <laughs> well, I know there won't be no problems with this unless the CGC case is cracked. So you see, Ghost Critic, if you're watching this, there is a reason why we have unpackaging videos as witness this thing here. Holy crap on a cracker. Now at least I got a record of it, so when I contact the guy and he said, well, I can't believe that that actually happened, that's well, check out my video. I can't believe it actually happened. This. Oh, yeah. First appearance of the man wolf, 6.5. Spider-Man 124. That's, he made a Spider-Man theme from the cartoon show in French. I have no idea. Somebody got me this CD a long time ago and it's got all these songs on it. I don't know if it's complete or not. I don't know what the names are or anything of the, the songs. It was by, uh, uh, I think, the uh, PM uh, Record Library. And uh, Buggy is uh, actually making me, he has this, and I guess he's making me a. Uh, gonna get me a copy with all the, the, the names on it and I guess the, the order in which they're uh, 
supposed to be played or something and the, the names and everything and so that's going to be cool because I, I have I don't even know if this is complete or not so when he sends me that copy I'll probably have extra tunes in there that's pretty nice of him to do that um now let me open up another one here what the hell let's see what what else can go wrong right this is all stuff that I bought on eBay in the last few weeks and Never had a chance to open it. <laughs> this is a nice, uh, you gotta kind of package as boxes. I wish that everybody would use when they send comic books, especially if there's a, you know, they're expensive books. Bubble wrap. I would have bubble wrapped the comic first and then put it between two pieces of cardboard. That's the way I do it. And again, I use this to cut over the actual cardboard, not in between the two pieces of cardboard. All right, this is uh, the second appearance of the Punisher. The amazing, sp oops, sorry about that, folks. Amazing Spider-Man number 135. I love this cover. Nice cover. Second appearance of the Punisher. I uh, found that I was missing some, uh, I had some holes in my Spider-Man collection because I can't find the boxes with the rest of my stuff in it and I got tired of looking for it for the last couple of years so I just <laughs> bought one. Well, what else do I got? Hey, speaking of Spider-Man, you know Never wonder why they, uh, back when I was growing up, you know, they had uh, the death of Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man 121 or whatever it was. Um, I picked these up too, I might as well show you these here. 121, death of Gwen Stacy, you know, 122 was it? Death of the uh, supposed death of the uh, ring goblin, goblin, gob go uh, goblin. Um, during this time, you know, a lot of us in my neighborhood, we were collecting the Spider-Man, big Spider-Man fans, you know, and everybody loved Gwen Stacy, and then we got in for a shock, you know. We all, we were before this issue, we were always making fun of uh, Peepy. I mean, uh, Peter Parker, we used to call him Pee Pee. And comparing, uh, we compared the, the, the Peter Parker love triangle to the Archie love triangle in Archie Comics between Archie, Betty Cooper, and uh, Veronica, Veronica Lodge. And uh, so we compared Pee Pee to AA, you know, Archie Andrews, AA. <laughs> and, uh, we said that that's got to change, man. He's starting to look like you know Archie Andrews. You know, we always thought that uh, Gwen Stacy was uh, Archie Andrews' Betty Cooper, and that uh, Mary Jane Watson, who who sounds like a uh, detective's assistant that smokes a lot of uh, joints, because Mary Jane's is what we used to call uh, joints, marijuana joints back in the '60s. Watson, Mary Jane Watson, what a name! But she was Veronica. She was Veronica. That was Betty Cooper. And uh, Pee Pee was Archie. <laughs> Pee Pee was AA. <laughs> oh, hey. I gotta show you my watch. That's what I'm talking about. See that? Three and a straw. And it's kind of funny because today in uh, the current uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man stories, they got a, a new a, a woman in there that's taken the place of Gwen Stacy, and her last name is Cooper. Go figure. Hmm. Very interesting. Perry the Platypus. 
Here's one, a package that I already started to open so as not to uh, Ah, what have we here? So as not to bore the crap out of uh, some of you. This is a uh, lower grade copy of Tales of Suspense number 52, which is the uh, first appearance, the first appearance of the Black Widow. Oh, this is a Mylar 2. Hmm. It's, this is a, like, uh, it's a lower grade copy. Very good plus. I would say very good. No, not a very good plus. A very good. That's kind of nice. I didn't. I don't think I had had this issue. What am I doing here? Oh, here's some Metaxa. Yeah, should I? What in that? I have a shot. Man. Excuse me while I Metaxa myself. I am intoxicated. <laughs> intoxicated. Sometimes I just slay myself. Ooh. I'm not used to drinking hard liquor. Three or four shots, five shots a year. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, hey, you know what? What's coming to an end is uh, finally that uh, the death of the family story arc, you know. I guess it's coming to an end in uh, Batman number 17. And uh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved this whole story arc. Just goes to show you how crazy this Joker really is. And um, But I'm kind of glad it's coming to an end because it was, you know, so damn long. Even worse is Animal Man, over a year and a half with the Rot story. I'm just, like, not even interested in it anymore. Even though it's a good story. I like Jeff Lemire's writing. But the uh, artwork is great in here. And you know what my opinion is? Everybody's saying that, uh, by now you've probably read these issues, everybody's saying that what we're going to find, you know, Underneath that platter is Alfred's head. That's what everybody's saying. It's going to be Alfred's head. Well, you know, if it were me, if I was Scott Snyder and I was writing this, I mean, who really gives a rat's rectum about Alfred Pennyworth? There, butlers are worth a penny a dozen. You can always replace Alfred with another English butler called Alfred, and he could even be a distant cousin of the real Alfred. I mean, who really cares about that? When you think of it, there is one person that's, you know, considering what the Joker is trying to do, because he thinks that everybody is dragging Batman down, and he, Batman's not fun anymore, you know, and he wants to get rid of all the people so he can make Batman, you know, fun again. <laughs> But who's the one person that really, I mean, really is, you know, always on Batman's case, is always meeting him secretly at night on top of rooftops in the alleys, and then he sends out the bat signal, blah, blah, blah. What I think we're going to find here is not Alfred's head. No. If Scott Snyder is doing this the way that I would do it, what you're going to find here... When the Joker lifts off that cover, off that platter, you're going to see the bloodied face of Alfred, but then you're also going to see the Joker lift the face off the decapitated head of Commissioner Gordon. Woohoo! <laughs> That's the way I would have written it. Think of it, you know. That would be so awesome. Everybody thinks it's Alfred. Yeah, of course, it's Alfred, but all it is is the face of Alfred. And then he put the face over the decapitated head of Commissioner Gordon. And we need to replace the commissioner. He's been around too long, too. Replace him with a female commissioner. Anyway, that's what I don't even know what I'm doing. This is the first time I've ever done a vlog. 
Couldn't have had that shot. I got so many packages to open up, I don't know. What else did I get here? Okay, I'll do one more. This already started. I don't even know where this came from. Oh, wait a minute, I got another one of these? It's another one. I just did it. Yeah. I got a good deal on this. I can't believe the price I got on this. I think $20. Just right around 20 bucks. $19 and then some uh, some shipping or something. It came to about $20. And I was surprised that when I won this, you know, I bid I bid on the one with the uh, that was in the CGC case and this one too. And I didn't think that I was going to, you know, win this, but Nobody bid on it. And that was my Maxis. So that's pretty and this is pretty nice condition too. It's a high high grade copy. First appearance of the man wolf. Twenty bucks. Um there's one that I started to open. Just to make things go quickly. Okay. What we got here? High grade. Uh, oh yeah, another. Uh, one thirty-five. Second appearance of the Punisher. I got a good deal on this one too. Thirty-one dollars and forty-seven cents. You know that's the that's the problem. When I bid on stuff that I want, and I see a few issues. I'll bid on all of them with like a you know my maximum prices, which or the minimum bid that they require. You know sometimes they require a minimum bid, and I just put that in or a dollar over the minimum. And usually I don't win, but sometimes I do. This was pretty uh, pretty good. For that price. Well, anyway, uh, I guess that's gonna be about all I can do. I don't want to make this video too long. I got a lot more stuff to do. I gotta finish drying my other one. Hey, I'm a Mary Marvel Marching Society band member. I tell you, yes, I am. Hmm. Oh Lord of Mercy, what am I doing? Uh, maybe I'll go upstairs and make some pizza and come back down and do another video. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, this is one of those vlogs. First time I've ever done one. I don't know what I'm doing here. Video log. That's that's what they are. Video log. Holy vey! I shouldn't be drinking this with narco. Well, okay then, everybody. Oh, what was that? Is something bugging me here? Oh, that's, that's what the... I, I'm loopy, telling you. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, sorry for my loopiness. And, uh, oh, I gotta contact this guy about that comic book now. Well, I'll let you know how that goes. And uh, take care, everybody. Thanks for watching and uh, live long, be well.